Hello, I'm John. I'm sat on board Corrick. I'm sat on board Corrick in the shed, and we weren't meant to be in the shed. We were meant to be out by now, but that's another story. Uh, a little bit delayed. Um, but it gives an opportunity to just talk about all the little bits and pieces that have happened during the, the upgrade beyond the, the big job. So I'll show you those now, shall I? Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoy this video. Well, the main event was the copper coating, and that's now all completely done. Uh, most of it happened in one day, and then there were two other days to um, deal with the, the, the padding. Um, and we have finished with the stripe that we've put on. If I just zoom in a bit there, what we've got is the copper coat, then a tiny little gap, then a one inch vinyl stripe to give us back to the look that we had before. And I think that all looks rather elegant, so I'm pleased with how that's gone. Because we had the rudder off to do uh, deal with the little leak at the top, we've had to put that obviously back on. And the way it works is just about here, there is a plate and that has to come off. Um, and what we've done is then re glass that back on. So the slightly different colour of copper coat there is just a, uh, a, a, a different and later addition to that. But that is all done. Um, propeller's been given a nice little shine up. All of the underwater fittings have been anti fouled with a black, much more conventional anti foul with just a bit of a gap between the fitting here and then the hull and then the copper coat so that there's no interaction between the bronze hull fitting and the copper coat itself. In the comments section somebody talked about the very bottom of the keel and we, we simply can't get there. When the boat's in the sling we will slap some conventional anti-fouling on that but um, that's, that's the only bit that we haven't managed to get to. To carry on the conversation about the rudder, the problem was a leak just at the top of the piece of teak that was there. That's now been cut out. A couple of um, glass fibre pads have been put in and they, they squeeze in coming in from either side and they're now properly bedded down. So we're hugely optimistic that that won't be a problem going forward. The other very noticeable new addition is that we now have a spray hood. I'll give you a bit of a closer look at that now. Really very pleased with how the spray hood looks and what we've got is a fairly conventional spray hood. If I just have a look here, there's three windows there at the front. There are two metal frames. Um, it's been bedded onto the deck there and that all looks quite elegant. Lorraine was able to put a nice little pocket in there in mesh so we could put a winch handle there if we needed it. Um, and it has all been oriented such that when I am stood, and I'm just going to move that out of the way, but I, can, I have got a good view forward at my eye line. The other addition that we've got that we may not run with all the time, this is definitely for um, the cold and wet, is we've got this insert that goes in right at the back of the spray hood, comes down and meets with the track on either side and has, and if I just operate that clip there and that clip there, it has a door that folds down and that can go inside so we should have no difficulty sailing with this up and with the the main saloon completely isolated from any driving rain that should be um, helpful in terms of making the boat a little bit drier not not that we had a problem this summer but um, i can imagine it happening one thing i will say about this uh, section here is that we can zip it all back out again. So if we are pottering in the Solent or the weather is fairly benign, we'll just unzip that completely and, and take it out. The other thing we have that I can't show you is that we have got a tent affair that will drape over the end of the boom, connects to the backstay 
and we'll go down to the guardrails to give us a sheltered area inside the cockpit against rain and or sun. So if the copper coat, the spray hood and the fix to the rudder were the main jobs, they've all been done. But there have been a couple of little things that have happened around the outside that um, we, we spent the summer thinking about and then decided to commit to now while we were in the shed. Um, so let me have a, just show you those. We have increased the number of uh, safety tether points so there's now four in the cockpit as well as the rail as well as the jack stay on the outside so the jack stay is is there and runs all the way from aft to all the way forward but we found that we were sometimes getting tangled in the cockpit so we put one two three four in place in order to make things a little bit more lovely Another thing that we were able to do is Nick very cleverly took some of the synthetic teak and made the surrounds here for the um, cave lockers on the port and starboard side. And I, I think that's got a really rather elegant look to it and fits with the synthetic teak that we have here. Apologies if this is a little bit untidy, but what we've done is inside the chart table, we've put a organizer in there to keep everything nicely separated so the charts go all the way into the end and that separator keeps pencils, logbook and almanac separate and we also built a little shelving system to fit in there just because things tended to rattle around a bit. You may remember that we had a problem early in the season with the log. We'd originally had a, uh, a sensor that handled the log and the depth and the water temperature all in one unit that didn't read very well for log and we um, separated it out. Uh, we've had a chance to tidy up the cabling for that as well and we also tidied up the bilge so we had an automatic bilge pump forward but it turned out that when we got the boat in the water it was just not quite where the water really sat so one of the things we've done is move that. You may remember us putting in a bilge pump right at the base of the mast, an automatic bilge pump. Actually it turns out that um, the water didn't tend to sit there. Um, when there was just a little bit of water in the bilge, it tended to sit just a bit further forward in this position underneath the heads and particularly when we were taking the log in and out we'd get oh, a couple of pints of water in there and tend to sit there so what we've done is we've moved the bilge pump to there and that should allow us to both get rid of it and see it and we put a tiny little um, hatch uh, sorry latch in there so that we can just pull that piece out and get to it nice and easy. And again, sorry if this is a bit dark and a little bit untidy at the moment, but we put in new lee cloths um, for the sea berth. So this berth here on the port side that's currently um, looking after the spinnaker, we put a lee cloth in there and that connects underneath. So we've had to put a couple of little bolts in the woodwork here, which is a shame, but the needs must. And we've done the, exactly the same thing on the um, on the starboard side, bolt on the leading edge there, another bolt on the trailing edge here, and the lee cloth sits underneath the bunk and can be rigged in a heartbeat. One of the things we had a good conversation about before we put the boat in the water last year was what we were going to do with the, the ropes. Because all the ropes come back into the cockpit, a lot of them are quite long. You know, we've got a third reef which is um, nearly 20 metres long. Um, that gives us a bit of a rope stowage problem and the solution that we've come up with having spent a bit of time sailing this year, uh, sorry last year and seeing how it all works is we're going to fit these little strips of nylon and we're going to attach them here parallel with the with the track about as high as we can in the centre and that gives us a tiny piece of string there that we can hang down, we loop our rope, put it through there put that in over the top and that should mean that our rope is readily available, hanging free and therefore draining 
um, but also looped up such that it doesn't tie itself in a knot while you're not looking. Very much James's idea and I'm looking forward to seeing how that all works when we get going. All in all we've had a fair bit of work done. The copper coat is a big job and best done inside the shed and that's good. Um, Lorraine who did the spray hood came down, measured it all up and got that all done such that it fits perfectly and really pleased with that. The fix to the rudder um, uh, post um, obviously it needed to get that done and that's looking good as well as getting the other bits and pieces done as well so uh, um, we were due to come out today but we're not um, that actually isn't an enormous crisis because our first sale isn't planned for about a week or two's time so we've got a little bit of time in hand um, well, I hope that was useful. It was a, it, it's been a busy period of six weeks. Uh, a lot of stuff got done. Um, I'm very grateful for James to um, have me in the shed um, and for his team for doing the work. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you very much indeed for watching.